Hey, welcome back. I remember growing up and Sundays were often uh, a time where I watched uh, the matinee movies with my mum. Now, back in the time, they were all black and white and uh, typically movies from the 1940s and, and even 50s. At Christmas time, there was one in particular that uh, was played year after year after year. And I didn't think much of it at the time. And I hadn't seen it for many decades, but uh, just recently I got to review it and um, it really struck a chord with me. Now, this film has gone on to become a classic and um, has won many awards since its time. It's considered one of the greatest films ever made, despite at the time being considered a flop. It was considered by both critics and audiences alike as sentimental, given that they just emerged from the horrors of World War II and all of the nihilism and... Um, cynicism that uh, that would entail. The film is called It's a Wonderful Life, directed by Frank Capra in 1946. And uh, despite its sentimentality, it's a lot darker than, than the happy ending and guardian angels in the theme of the movie would have you believe. Fundamentally, it's about a middle-aged man who'd made a continual series of sacrificial decisions that benefited his friends, his family, and even his community, laying aside his own plans and his own needs for the benefit of others. While that may not seem so bad, the fact that all of those people around him went on to achieve success, happiness, wealth, and prosperity, while he remained unfulfilled in his own personal aspirations, and eventually, through no fault of his own, the victim of economic collapse, potential bankruptcy, and even jail. Economic disaster, scheming competitors, incompetent associates, and a suffocating and stifling small town mentality meant that um, he was stagnating and developing ever more frustration and resentment at not achieving the things that he'd always dreamed of. Slowly but surely, depression, anxiety started to creep in. And the final blow was when, through an incompetent action of an associate, there was a misplaced monetary transaction that uh, not only left the company on the verge of bankruptcy and insolvency, but also him being implicated for some kind of mismanagement, which meant basically jail time. So it turns out that um, he goes to his main rival um, and asks for a loan in order to cover the, uh, the, the debt to prevent insolvency of the company and, and collapse. However, uh, this uh, rival of his represents the dark side of human nature and far from offering some assistance, uh, ridicules and humiliates him. Now, our hero, George, puts up his life insurance policy as collateral for this loan when, uh, you know, cynically, the, uh, the competitor suggests to him that um, he's now worth more dead than alive. With these words ringing in his ears, he leaves without any assistance, uh, crashes his car, gets drunk, uh, beaten up in a, in, in a pub brawl, now, the only thing that um, doesn't happen to this guy is that he has an unfaithful wife who nags, resents him, and uh, you know, causes more misery than everyone else. In actual fact, his wife is the archetypical 1940s perfect wife, adoring, loving, supportive, and you know, the perfect mother and the perfect wife. Now, in total despair, with these words of being worth more dead than alive ringing in his ears, he finds his way to the side of a bridge, staring into the water and uh, contemplating that maybe he is worth better off dead than alive. Having now seen this film after so many years and being through a divorce and all of the emotional roller coaster that that entails, I'm sure that there are many of you watching this video who've found themselves in the same state. And quite frankly, when we start seeing ourselves as being worth more dead than alive, we really know we've hit rock bottom. Anyway, just as he's about to throw himself off the bridge, someone else falls into the water off the same bridge. 
So now totally blown out of his uh, mindset, he just instinctively jumps in and rescues this person. So it turns out that this person uh, claims to be his guardian angel on earth uh, to earn his wings. And so, uh, of course, our hero, George, doesn't believe him. He thinks it's all a load of hogwash. But in conversation with him, he declares that he wishes he'd never been born. So our guardian angel, in a very Dickensian kind of manner, takes him into the world that would exist had he never been born. And one by one, he, he travels through all of those little incidents, those, those little sacrifices that he'd made, those little random acts of kindnesses that he performed, those little impulses of good character that um, made a difference to someone else's life, and reviews what would have happened if he hadn't been there to perform those acts. His younger brother would have died in childhood had he not rescued him and incurred deafness in one ear as the result. His brother, having therefore died, would never have grown up and become an ace pilot in World War II, shooting down a kamikaze and rescuing, saving the lives of hundreds of sailors from that mission. He wouldn't have rescued uh, a child who uh, almost was poisoned by a pharmacist who had mistakenly put um, the wrong dosage in a formula. That pharmacist was now in jail for the same kind of misdemeanor. You know, his wife would have ended up a spinster working in a library, miserable, you know, and the list goes on and on and on of these, all these people and the community around him who were, were impacted by his being present. By him not being there running this company that his father had built, um, his rival would have dominated all the businesses in town and being the dark character, as I described, the town had now turned into a, a sleaze hole full of unemployment, misery, prostitution and debauchery. So it's really brought home to George that his presence in the world has not only impacted the positive outcomes for his family and friends who he now, let's face it, resented, but his whole town and community were impacted by him not leaving the mark that he did. At first, it seems impossible to George how the small random acts of one ordinary man can have had such a profound effect, not only on the people he loves, but his community as well. But it slowly comes to dawn on him that all of the accumulated random acts of a decent human being can have far-reaching and serious consequences far beyond his own perception of self-worth. He starts to realize that by being here, he's made the entire world a better place. And that that's something that he should take joy and pride in and remember. Given this alternative vision, he begs the angel to take him back to the current real world as it is, um, and he joyfully accepts the consequences that are about to engulf him. He returns home fully prepared to be arrested, taken to jail for apparent embezzlement, um, and is prepared to suffer all those consequences once more in the same sacrificial way that he did before for the benefit of all the townsfolk and his own family. However, as he returns home with a totally different perspective on life, he realizes that um, his wife and the townsfolk have found out about his predicament and have all rallied to raise money to repay this debt that was about to cause his imprisonment and the collapse of the company. And so the film ends on a positive note where a man in dire straits who is of good character in the end finds that his friends have rallied to support him and uh, rescue him in his time of need. I think this film is really a film for our time as well. It's effectively a film about perspective. When many of us men feel that we've been betrayed and left behind by a world that's moved on and prospered while, while we seem to be suffering from a sense of irrelevance and uh, as if our lives haven't made any real impact but this film points out a lot more than is immediately apparent. It suggests to us that uh, 
our purpose on this earth is far greater than merely for our own self-gratification. It also points out to us that those little acts that we perform as decent human beings have a far-reaching impact that we can't possibly contemplate in our day-to-day -day struggles. And uh, those impacts are far greater in some than we could ever hope to achieve by doing those on our own. And finally, it, it reminds us that when we're in our darkest hour, suffering from all the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, that um, there are people around us who will rally to help and assist when we enter our own time of need. The thing is, we often forget that as men of character, people like to be around us and they like us to be around them. The problem is that um, we're so busy contributing to the benefit of others that um, we often feel like we need to solve all our problems on our own. So when we get into trouble, we find ourselves lonely and alone, not because that's really the way it is, but because we've always been the ones to solve problems and make things happen. But the reality is those that like having us around, those that respect our characters and want us to be a part of their life, will do what's necessary to help us remain so. We need to give our friends the opportunity um, and I think the grace to step in and help us when we're in our time of greatest need. I certainly found that when I was at my lowest ebb, it was my closest friends that stepped in, kept an eye on me, rang me regularly to make sure I was okay. Um, they really stepped up. So for those of you dads who maybe are for the first time this year alone at Christmas, feeling sad and feeling like your lives have unraveled and fallen apart, do yourself a favor. Watch It's a Wonderful Life with Jimmy Stewart. But more than that, give your friends a call. Open up a bit of a space for them. Allow them into your life and allow them the chance to help you rebuild yourself. Because at the end of the day, none of us are an island. And uh, it's when we're at our darkest time, we need to really allow the George Baileys of the world to step in and do us a favor once in a while. So till next time, have yourself a merry little Christmas and I'll see you in the new year. Walk tall. Cheers. By the center! Quick! March!